Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here today to talk to you about uncapping learning at a massive scale. And what I'm talking about here is not adaptive learning in a classroom or at something in an individually small scale size, but, but bringing uncapped learning across entire nations, like the nation of Australia and the nation of Mexico, and in very diverse environments like multinational companies across many nations. So what I want to do is talk about the fundamentals of what it takes to be able to do this. And never before have we ever been able to do this than right now because of all the technologies that we're able to put together. And one of the most important pieces it begins with bringing together quality mentors and experts. And, and what I want to talk about is how do we pull that into a system at a massive scale using the, the data that we're able to pull into a system from the legacy systems from out in the wilds and make sense of information in near real time. Our platform is constantly having to connect with various changes in the global workforce needs. So what, what's happening in the world around us right now is that entire nations are seeing that they have this unmet potential, that they have a labor to work workforce mismatch and what they're trying to do today is figure out ways to bring in platforms like ours and connect platforms so that they can up level or reskill or retool their entire workforce for instance we're right now we're working with educators across all of australia and what that's requiring us to do is in real time, dynamically create a, a learning progression for these teachers so that they can meet certain learning outcomes. And what that dynamic learning progression means, all of us learn in different ways. Some of us learn in a linear manner. Some of us learn, well, like myself, I sort of hopscotch through life. So I zigzag through my learning progression. So there are precursors and postcursors to learning. And each of us is unique and different. So how can we do this at a massive scale and customize those progressions for people so that they can get from point A to point B very rapidly and in a way that is personalized to their particular ways of learning, their modalities of learning, the kinds of content and, and learning styles that they have. And one of those ways is leveraging machine learning and the new algorithms so that those progressions are being assessed and reassessed and changed dynamically. So what does this mean for us? Well, big data has allowed us to be able to take in all sorts of, of information from various systems, from, from uh, the internal legacy systems of countries, the social networks people are tying into, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and to be able to create a use case curriculum or a, um, a, a personalized curriculum for people and testing it and retesting it. So essentially we're able to take a lot of noise and synthesize that noise around a, a cognitive graph, I call it. So we, we assess the, with cognitive markers throughout our system so that we can ultimately finalize or, or find the best pathway to get to people to their outcomes. And when I talk about uncapping learning, what I mean is I don't believe that we should get people to a standard or to a single outcome. We need to help people potentiate and build and uncap that learning potential so that they're constantly creating a continually improving program. So. What we're doing in order to be able to do this is we're leveraging the cloud. The cloud right now is growing five times faster than any of the IT technologies out there today. And governments around the world are now becoming much more comfortable with the cloud. Just a, a few years ago, 
they would not allow us to be able to host their content or data up in the cloud. They would have had us behind their firewall. And now we're able to connect in with APIs to multiple systems across multiple countries to be able to leverage experts across countries so that they can ultimately learn from each other. We're using different types of algorithms, machine learning algorithms and uh, proprietary types of algorithms so that we can engage learners in, and um, uh, change the, the uh, visualization of the data that constantly is engaging them into their learning path. And being able to pass data back out to content creators so that they're able to continually improve the content based on what they're learning about the learner needs. And what we're doing is bringing this all together in a single platform so that we can deliver this, the content that is customized and personalized to each learner in any time, any place. And what's fascinating about this today, and we're, we're landing in different types of countries that have varying abilities of technology, is that the mobile technologies are growing so rapidly. In fact, there are 4.3 billion unique um, technologies out there that are um, able to use, our mobile technologies out there now. So that allows us to be able to deliver learning to anybody with a mobile device. Today, learning doesn't just happen in schools. In fact, what we're doing is seeing that we're breaking the brick and mortar down in schools so that learning becomes a lifelong experience. For myself, I find that I'm a learner constantly. Every day I'm searching and learning from other people. I reach out to experts to help me understand new things about the technologies, about algorithms. We're, we're becoming an open society around sharing information, curating information, and learning from each other. So the traditional way of learning and in a classroom and getting a piece of paper and having this static piece of knowledge is, is gone now. And now we're building knowledge maps that are, that are growing across different organizations and countries and systems. It's an exciting time to be part of the learning space. You know, and the global workforce is no longer a static experience. It requires that we all come together and solve huge problems that are out there. We have a, a water crisis. Many of the, the countries that we're talking to today are bringing us in to help them change at very big, deep, systemic problems by creating a continuously learning environment. And so that means that the formal way of doing learning is no longer um, applicable. Being just static, a static learner, isn't going to allow us to really break through uh, the problems and come up with solutions now. It requires that we create a continuously improving program which requires that we inspire curiosity, that we leverage experts from inside and outside of systems and across systems so that we continually challenge the, the, the programs, the curriculum, and, and continuously build on top of it. So what we're doing right now is combining the best parts of Facebook, the best parts of Google, and recommendations with a learning overlay so that we can have the, the data coming in in so many different ways. I, we've built various applications that I call um, uh, uh, share and learn and impact and discover. And all of these are unique ways of gathering data and being able to distribute data and incentivize and award people for their work that they're doing. So our platform continually learns as you learn. Our algorithms are dynamic. And what's, what's unique now and what pulls this all together is this ability for us to be able to do this in near real time. And never before had we been able to do this, but today we can do this because of the new technologies that we are able to leverage with uh, Elasticsearch, machine learning, and other types of open source technologies that we've been able to integrate into the platform that allow us to dynamically um, reprogram a system in near real time. Thank you very much.